A G E N. Drollshagen. Yeah. You all know Eric McDonald, right? Uh, Mike Freeman is here. He'll have a few comments. And then I, you know, I, I fully want to open it up for questions uh, to a degree. We'll see. I think we've got some answers for you. And then we, when we're done, we're done. But um, so I, I beg your indulgence for a few minutes as we get started. When you ask questions, you know, speak up. They're not going to have to yell at you because we're talking in the microphone in the mult box. So if you can't hear, let us know too, okay? So we'll be around in a little bit and uh, welcome to the FBI. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Uh, this is Matt talking into your wireless to see if you hear it any differently because of the wind. Uh, all right, I'm going to try this one and see what happens too. Uh, talking into your wireless.
shoot. <laughs> That's what you need. As well as wind, I'm trying to see this is more directional. You want some more tape? Yeah, could you? Just, I, I got gas, some gaffers I meant they were complaining back at our station that they couldn't really hear it. And so I thought I'd just do this. <laughs> If this stays like this, I don't know. Stay like that. Uh, the is so angled. You Sorry, want to put this underneath? Yeah, if it can go. And uh, I don't know, something like this. If you sure want to screw that up. I just want to see what this one does too, because it is. We're getting some wind. And yeah, I that's what I was afraid of. A, I want to give them a second option here. Thanks for your help. Yeah, no problem. Sorry to get your little thing stained up here with No, this that's thing. all right. That's all right. It's like... I think something like this, you know. Yeah, let's try the... Here, this one. I'll hold, I'll hold oh. it for you. If I just go like this. Yeah, maybe put like one on each foot. Yeah, something like this. Boom, boom. Yeah, let me try to do all three. And then this one here. And hopefully they can hear this one. And then another one. Thanks. Sure. I'll just go like that. And I'm gonna just take a piece of this and put it on my tripod if I can. Yep. Thanks, I'll just go with that. No problem. I think it'll stay. Does it look like it? I think so. It there. should it should be. Thank you. You're welcome. Check, 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 check. One, two, three. Check, one, two, three. Check, 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 check. Mic check, one, two, three. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. One, two, three, check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. Is this yours? Check. Check, 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 check. Yeah, it's on. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. Check, check. One, two, three, check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. No way to do it. Check, 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 check. Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. One, two, three. Check, 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 check. Mic check, one, two, three. Check, 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 check. One, two, three. Check, 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 check. Mic check, one, two, three. Check, check, one, two, three. Check, check. This one? Matt, you don't want this one?
try this secondary mic too on channel uh, channel two also because their mics here are a little windy so I'm gonna have another one going here and see which one you hear better Test one, two, three, check, 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 check. Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Test one, two, three. Test one, two. Yeah. Okay.
Fanboys Voice works everywhere. Is this you? One, two, three, 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 four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Okay. Richard, they're going to be doing into this one, so, and I don't know if they're going to have notes. If I put it that way, is that all right?
Yeah, that's right. Okay. We are, we are getting a lot of wind. Yeah. How's that sound? Let's try that. All right, try it out. Test one, two. All right. No, no, this is not the warning. We're just testing the new microphone. Does that sound better? That sounds. That's. Does everybody say that sounds better? All right. Test one, two. Test. Is that better? Test one, two. Test, test. All right. Let's see if we um. Uh, they're just they're they're fussing with the microphone because the wind is quite high. Is there buzzing? Yeah, they're buzzing. Yeah. Is there buzzing? It's probably is it probably the wireless mic? Is there, is there buzzing? Nope. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Test one, two. Can we move the wireless mic over here? Test one, two. Put it on my end. Is that clean? That sounds good. Much better with my mic. Grab that wireless because we're just using that one. Okay. Yep. Much better. Okay. All right. And I don't. I think this is gonna. I think that's gonna stay in there, right? Yeah, I think it will. All right. It should. As long as unless that, there's something we could shove in there, but it looks like it'll stay. That'll, as long as that'll stay. Test one, two. Oh, is that mine? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to grab yours. Sorry. Right. No. Uh, is it sound? Yeah, that, that's that, that sounds good. Okay. It should stay there.
know, I'm, I, I got an update for you. We, uh, you know, I'm, this, I'm Kevin Smith. I'm the public affairs officer for the Minneapolis field office here at the FBI. I just want to give you an update. I know we called you here at 3 o'clock. As you know, since Monday night, this has been a very fluid situation uh, on all fronts in this community. Uh, the situation rem remains ever fluid this afternoon. Uh, and we understand and, and uh, we beg your patience here. Hopefully we can come down here in just a few more minutes as uh, we try to uh, continue working through uh, the current environment that we're in. So our folks are upstairs uh, getting ready to come down. I know you've been here for an hour and I'm sorry about that, but I can tell you that we'll be down here the next 15 minutes to a half hour um, with more information for you. But I just wanted to come down here and let you know that uh, we haven't forgotten about you and we'll be down here shortly, okay? Same Great. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I'll come down. Oh, I'll come down first, Esme, okay. and then before they come out, and then I'll give you two minutes to set, get the anchor toss, okay? Yes. Thank you, everybody.
I can power down. Everything you need is laying in the cart right there. Okay. Hopefully they'll do my audio. Say that again. Oh, are we getting are we getting close? Is that what's happening? I don't know. I just gotta walk in. We gotta make sure I can't call them anymore because this is your ISP, so you're gonna have to do a mic check. With them and see if they've got you. Uh, yeah. Hello. Is it fit? Yep. It's not very loud, right? I'm going to try turning the media up on it. Hey, Dan. All the way? If I hit this, we'll unlock it. Mm -hmm. Does that help? No? It's everything cranked. Okay. Can I hit this or will it disconnect? What do you mean by hit it? So I don't accidentally hit the red button? Oh, I think it'll stay fine. Yeah, it'll stay fine. Um, what time? Yeah. Yep, five minutes. Three minutes. Can I hear you? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. We can? Yep. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Well, the FBI field office in Brooklyn Center, we've been here a couple of hours. They were supposed to have a news conference right here. 
that started at 3 o'clock, that with the FBI special agent in charge, the U.S. Attorney, Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman, and the Commissioner of the Department of Public Safety. We have been waiting patiently for them to come out and give us an update on the investigation into the death of George Floyd. But still no word as of yet. I did just see the superintendent of the BCA, Drew Evans, who also just showed up as well. We don't know what the holdup is at this hour, but we will bring you that news conference live um, as soon as it ends. So we're going to be coming out right at the top of the B block here. I can't hear them. So you're all on your own. Probably, but. Okay, quick chopper hitting them. How far out am I? <laughs> Stand by. Yeah, and guys, we've been here for a couple of hours, this news conference with the FBI, the U.S. Attorney, the Commissioner of the Department of Public Safety here in the state, and also the Hennepin County Attorney. That was set to start right back here at 3 o'clock, but we have been waiting now more than an hour and a half. We were told at 4 o'clock that those folks would be out here in 15 to 30 minutes still. That has gone longer than they have said. I did just see the superintendent of the BCA, Drew Evans, just arrived here at the FBI field office as well. We will be here waiting for them, and we'll bring you that news conference live as it happens. For now, back to you guys. What's that? I know. <laughs> yeah, I can. You want to just hold this for What's that? Say that again. Say that again. We're being live streamed on what? Call up. I'm disconnecting you.
what that looks like. Here we come. Okay, everybody, this is uh, this is a two minute warning. But I promise you, it'll be out in two minutes. Erica McDonald, U.S. Attorney for Minnesota, will be our first speaker. She'll introduce uh, our special agent in charge, Reiner Droshagen, and then we'll also hear from Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman. Okay? And then we'll open up for some questions. It'll be in and out. We'll hope to answer your questions as well. Okay, thank you. Testing one, two. Yep. but maybe a little bit further back. Sure. A little more distance. Oh, that's right. Right. You got to do the wingspan, right? First and foremost, first and foremost, I apologize profusely for the weight that you all had to have. We thought we would have another development that I could tell you about. Unfortunately, we don't at this point, but I am here to talk to you about the federal investigation. County Attorney Mr. Freeman, standing to my right, is here to talk to you about the state investigation. With me is Reiner Drollshagen. He is the special agent in charge of Minneapolis FBI. He too will talk about the federal investigation and Superintendent Drew Evans from BCA will also make a few comments before we open it up for question and answer. My name is Erica McDonald. I'm the United States Attorney here for the District of Minnesota. On May 25th of 2020, George Floyd was arrested and detained by Minneapolis police officers. 
I'm here to talk about and make sure the community and the media is aware that we are conducting a robust and meticulous investigation into the circumstances surrounding the events of May 25th, 2020 and the police officers' actions on that evening. I really probably don't need this to say this to all of you, but Minneapolis, our nation, really the world, has witnessed this incredibly and disturbing loss of life. My heart goes out to George Floyd. My heart goes out to his family. My heart goes out to his friends. And my heart goes out to the community. We are grieving and we will continue to grieve. To be clear, the Department of Justice has made the investigation in this case a top priority. We have assigned highest of the high in my office to investigate and look at the case. FBI likewise has assigned their experienced law enforcement officers to conduct the investigation. And to be clear, President Trump, as well as Attorney General, Attorney General William Barr, are directly and actively monitoring the investigation in this case. I have had direct communications with Attorney General Barr and his staff and will continue to do so. The federal investigation in this case will determine whether the actions the former Minneapolis police officers took violated any federal criminal laws to include any civil rights violations. Federal civil rights criminal cases have categories and one is called under color of law. In other words, if an officer, whether it be federal, state, local, or tribal, is acting, acting under their authority and asserts or invokes the power bestowed upon them to deprive any person of any right or privilege protected by the Constitution or the laws of the United States. That is a violation of federal criminal law. It must be proven that the subject took action or did not take action when he or she knew that was wrong and chose to do it anyway. As with all matters, the investigation in this case will be comprehensive and will be conducted with the highest integrity as the community would expect. For those that aren't aware of my background, prior to being the United States Attorney for the District of Minnesota, I was a judge in Dakota County for over eight plus years. Having sat on that side of the bench and having presided over a multitude of trials, I can tell you, I can tell the community, I can tell everybody interested that it is critical, it is essential, it is imperative that the investigation is done right and done right the first time. And that is what we are going to do. This has been a rapidly evolving situation. We first learned of it in the early morning hours of Tuesday. The FBI reached out directly to me and we have been working on this case nonstop since we were notified. We understand the severity of the situation unfolding. It breaks my heart to see what is going on in our streets in Minneapolis and in St. Paul and in some of our suburbs. And I am pleading, I am pleading with individuals to remain calm and to let us conduct this investigation. Give it just a minute before I blow over. We share with the FBI and we share with our state partners 
who are conducting parallel but independent investigations so that is clear. We have two different investigations and conclusions and recommendations that will come from those to each of our respective offices. But we share an unwavering commitment to see that this investigation is done right, that it's done forthwith, that we act with dispatch, and that we live up to the standards the community demands. Our highest priority is that justice will be served. With that, I am going to close my comments and turn it over to Special Agent in Charge, Reiner Drolshagen from the FBI. Thank you, Erica. Good afternoon. My name is Reiner Drolshagen. I'm the Special Agent in Charge of the Minneapolis Field Office. Echoing U.S. Attorney's comments, I'd like to say I express my complete condolences to the Floyd family. I'd also like to express my sympathy to the citizens of Minnesota as there is extreme frustration, anger, and sadness. I also want to thank Chief Arant Orondondo of Minneapolis Police Department. He reached out to me in the middle of the night and requested our assistance. His call enabled me to immediately reach out to the U.S. Attorney's Office to enlist their assistance. And as such, we were able to open an investigation in a matter of a few hours after the incident. Our role in this investigation is to investigate allegations of willful violations of federal civil rights. The FBI team is following the path where the facts will lead us. We are conducting a swift, yet meticulous investigation. In less than 72 hours, much work has been done, but I assure you there is much more to be accomplished. I want to ensure that you understand we respond to cases like these as quickly as possible. We will follow the case to conclusion in partnership with our state partner, the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. The FBI is a fact gathering agency. We, co we collect facts and we need your help. We're asking everyone that was present before, during, and after the incident to come forward to help us build the best picture of what occurred. Each little piece of the puzzle helps us complete the big picture. If you have any information, or if you have any videos, or you know of anyone who can help us with this, I encourage you to ask them to contact 1-800-CALL-FBI. Again, I'm encouraging you to reach out to 1-800-CALL-FBI. No tip is too small. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Mike Freeman, Hennepin County Attorney. We are the principal prosecuting agency for the state and the criminal side. Initially, I want to say that my thoughts and those of my office continue to be with the family and the friends of George Floyd. They know they are hurting over this senseless death. The manager of our victim services division has been in touch with George Floyd's family on several occasions and is keeping them updated on what is happening in this case. They are aware that the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension, better known as the BCA, the Hennepin County Medical Examiner, and the Hennepin County Attorney's Office are moving as quickly and thoroughly as possible. I've also been in direct consultations with Governor Tim Walls, with Attorney General Keith Ellison, um, and others in the state, the city, and the county to discussions on this case. As many of you know, the Hennepin County Attorney's Office is one of very few prosecution offices in the United States who have successfully charged and convicted and obtained a guilty verdict against a police officer for unreasonable use of deadly force. 
We have developed a detailed plan for that prosecution and with the BCA a detailed plan for investigation. Our office has been flooded with calls, many as a thousand a day, as well as email and social media from people in this jurisdiction, in this state, and throughout the country. And the main question is, what are you going to do about the murder of George Floyd? Well, I've just described what we're going to do. We are going to investigate it as expeditiously, as thoroughly, and completely as justice demands. Sometimes that takes a little time, and we ask people to be patient. We have to do this right, and that's what we'll do. I also want to tell you that our office has led the nation in openness on these types of cases. When we decide to charge an officer, we put the criminal complaint on our website. If we decide that the evidence is, does not support a criminal charge, we put our report and all our evidence on the website for all to see. When we make the decision in this case, we will do the same. What I can assure the citizens of Minnesota, we will do it as quickly as we are, can do it as possible. We'll do it as quickly as possible. Um, I think Drew Evans from the BCA is next. Drew? Uh, thank you, County Attorney Freeman. My name is Drew Evans. I am the superintendent of the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. First, I'd like to share with my colleagues here in expressing my deepest thoughts and sympathies to the family of George Floyd, the heartbreak that they're going through in the community as a whole. This is a difficult time for our entire community uh, as they mourn uh, his death. The Bureau of Criminal Apprehension uh, began this investigation immediately after this incident occurred when we were contacted by the, Min the Minneapolis Police Department. Agents were deployed, including our crime scene, immediately began gathering evidence, talking to witnesses, and then working uh, immediately with the county attorney's office, discussing our findings and what we had at that time. Next, uh, over the night, as was indicated, the FBI was contacted. I spoke with Chief Arredondo. He informed me he was contacting them, and that was a contact we all welcome in this process. We're working very collaboratively together through this process. Our agents are working closely together. We've deployed numerous resources. We brought in agents from all over the state recognizing the importance of an expeditious, quick investigation that is still thorough, independent, and unbiased by all of our organizations. Those findings will be turned over to the county attorney on the state side and on the federal side, as noted to the United States Attorney's Office. The same thing we share as the FBI did. We want any citizen, anybody who is there that witnessed this event that has information that would be helpful to our investigation to either call the FBI tips line or 651-793-7000, which is the BCA Operations Center. My perspective is we want citizens to go wherever they are most comfortable, whichever line they are, so that we get all of the information in this case so we can conduct the most thorough investigation possible. And with that, I think uh, we'll turn it over to uh, the U.S. Attorney and County Attorney for questions. And so at this point, we're going to open it up for questions. Um, I can tell you, I'll start by saying we've got questions too, and we're getting answers to those. We're doing our best. We're digging in, but we do. And I want to echo what my law enforcement partner said. We need the community's help. There were folks there on the scene, not folks that we couldn't identify necessarily at the time. We need to know who they are. Come forward. If you have a video, please share it. We want to do as quickly as we can a thorough investigation to get answers to those questions. And I know that I saw the first hand going up was in front of me, ma'am. You had a question? Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, what do you, I mean, tonight, this doesn't sound good for protest tonight. Twitter is already saying what you guys are announcing today. You know, they were hoping for maybe charges. You guys stepped out here today because we're not getting charges. Are you worried that that's going to ignite more riots tonight? My hope is that getting it out through you that the community will understand that we are taking this seriously, that we're working as quickly as possible. So the community understands we don't, we don't announce investigations typically. As you in the media knows, it's unusual for us to come forward and tell you about an investigation. As the United States Attorney, we're counseled that we are not to talk about that until the time of the conviction, typically, or in some cases, perhaps charges. It was really, it's really imperative that the community understands how seriously we're taking this 
and how quickly and swiftly we are moving on this. And so my hope with that is, is that people will understand that protests are always acceptable. That is the cornerstone of our justice system, is that people have the right to say how they feel and to talk about their, their feelings and to protest peacefully. But the obstruction and the destruction of property and harm to individuals has got to stop. We are one Minnesota. We're at our best when we're at our worst. And we've got to come together and stop the needless and unnecessary destruction of property and harm to human life. Mike, Sir. Can you address that? Can I you may. Yes. This state is well known and has a strong reputation for firm and thorough First Amendment advocation. We support peaceful demonstrations. I had a long talk today with Reverend Jesse Jackson, who came at the request of Attorney General Keith Ellison and the governor, and I believe Reverend Jackson will be speaking and asking for peace, peaceful protest today. Peaceful protest is good. It advocates our rights, and it also calls forth the witnesses that the United States Attorney wants us to come forward. Violence is not. Violence hampers our case. It takes valuable po police resources away from our investigation, and it also harms innocent people who had nothing to do with that. It gets in the way of our work. So we're asking, please, please, say what you need to say. Demonstrate how you need to, to do. That is in our Constitution, and all of us believe in that. But please, don't destroy an innocent person's property who had nothing to do with it. Part of the problem is, sir, the, the video goes on for seven minutes. He is clearly struggling to breathe during that time. And I think people will be hard-pressed to understand how he can't bring charges at least against the officer who had his knee on that man's neck. It's a violation of my ethics to talk and evaluate evidence before we announce our charging decision. And I will not do that. I will say this, that that video is graphic and horrific and terrible, and no person should do that. But my job in the end is to prove that he violated a criminal statute. And there is other evidence that does not support a criminal charge. We need to wade through all of that evidence and to come through with a meaningful, meaningful determination, and we are doing that to the best of our ability. Mike, the National Guard is coming in. Can you get, give me your actions on that? Okay. Reaction on the National just, just Guard say, coming in? When it comes to the African-American community, you got, and we're here because a lot of us came down to actually call for peace, but when you guys are asking for them to be patient, they're saying that there was no patience when it came to George Floyd, when he begged and pleaded for his life. What message would you give us to take back to the African-American community to bring peace and to ensure them that justice is going to be served? I bring the same message that African-American Attorney General of the State of Minnesota, Keith Ellison, is bringing. I'm bringing the same message of the Reverend Jesse Jackson. We have to do this right. We have to prove it in a court of law. And I will just point to you the comparison to what happened in Billy in Baltimore in the Gray case. It was a rush to charge. It was a rush to justice. And all of those people were found not guilty. I will not rush to justice. I'm going to do this right. And those folks who know me in the African community know I will do my very level best, but I will not rush justice because justice cannot be rushed. Mike. Thank you for that. It was um, wonderful to hear you say that you came down with other members of the community to ask for peace. And that is the most, that's probably the most positive thing I've heard here all day. So I cannot begin to thank you enough for that. Um, and to the extent you can share that and you can share the integrity and the honesty of what we're doing and trying to tell you what's going on, um, please do, because we need you. We need the community. But it's really important that we emphasize that everybody, everybody in the United States is entitled to due process of law. And due process of law requires us as prosecutors, as law enforcement officers, to make sure that we've done a careful investigation. And it requires us, as I told you, I've, I've tried, as a judge, I presided over hundreds of cases, including first-degree murder cases. 
I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that all your ducks are in a row before you make that charging decision. But you can't, you can't undo what you've done if you rush. But if you take that time, you're going to do it right the first time, and you're going to get it done the first time. Mike, I have a question just about National Guard coming in now. I mean, there is, there is, sounds like fear and worry that this is going to escalate. Thoughts on the Guard being called in now? Well, first off, the decision to call in the National Guard is the governor's decision, and I support his decision. Second, you know, I since I've been Hennepin County Attorney, I try to do be the best prosecutor I can be and run the best office. And I try to stay out of other people's business, okay? So the on the streets and the law enforcement is not my business directly. I do encourage people not to, to, to do dangerous things and to harm other people or property. But I can say to you that um, we just can't rush this. I've been involved in a number of these investigations. The BCA has got their most veteran people and they are good. I have leading the prosecution team, the two prosecutors that brought justice in the Justine Damon case. And as I said to you earlier, it's one of the few successful murder convictions of a police officer or using force in the country. And I had a lot of pressure to hurry that, to do it quickly. You can't do that. These need to be done right, please. Give me and give the United States Attorney the time to do this right, and we will bring you justice. I promise. Are there police officers cooperating? Esme, as you know from covering these kind of cases for a long time, each of the facts are different and each of them have to be addressed differently. Um, I assure you that if the person who had committed the act, and I do not condone or respect the act done by the police officer to Mr. Floyd, that was excessive and that was wrong. The question in my business is, is it criminal? That's what I have to prove. And, um, you know, if, if it, there are cases that you can quickly and easily evaluate, most of the cases, particularly cop use of force cases, are specifically more complex and have to be done right, and we're committed to doing it right. Sir, you. Police officers can I, Mike, can I answer? I want to sure. answer that question as well, if I may. Um, you know, it's important for, I 100% I agree with you. That is the question, right? It is the question that people in my office are asking. It's a question, and we were all feeling the pain of watching that. But this is, this is what needs to be understood is, and I know you all understand this, but to the extent I'm speaking to the community, police officers, by the nature of their job, have the authority to use a certain amount of force when they're executing their duties faithfully and honestly and in accordance with their policies. And so a, law, a police officer, a law enforcement officer, has within the latitude of their scope of duty, the ability to use the right amount of force, but not excessive force, not excessive force as defined by the law. And so that is what we're looking at with respect to any federal criminal violation of civil rights is that issue of excessive force. Okay, one more question, one more. Erica, can you Erica, can you the police officer make the difference between me? I can tell you that every United States attorney of all the all my colleagues that are out there, we are vested with doing what's right for our state at the time. Of course, we're part of the Department of Justice. William Barr, I report to the DAG, who then reports the Deputy Attorney General, who then reports the Attorney General. Um, but every United States attorney is given the discretion in their community to pursue the charges and to follow the leads where they are and to pursue the case as they deem appropriate. I am, however, keeping my boss 
in communication, in briefing, so that he understands the investigation that's going on here in the state of Minnesota. I should have made clear to one thing, and I know it was in our statement that we issued last night, but on our team of experienced uh, trial attorneys, which are the most experienced in my office, I can tell you I've been in viewing the evidence with, the, with my criminal chief, with my first assistant, United States Attorney Anders Folk, with my deputy criminal chiefs, we're all in there together. Um, but we're also partnering with the Civil Rights Division from Department of Justice. The Civil Rights Division has an experience of doing these cases nationally. They bring with that expertise of understanding um, the requirements of, you know, 18 U.S.C. 242, which is the violation of law that we're specifically addressing. And so, yes, we are partnering with Department of Justice to use their expertise and their resources, but we are leading the investigation um, and we are working collaboratively with our state and local partners and federal partners. The president is actively monitoring the situation. But I have not spoken to the president directly, no. Did you say you anticipated making a different announcement today before coming out here? Can you tell us what the, the wait was about? I cannot. I can only ask you to trust me that it mattered and that I hope that I can fill you in on that uh, at the appropriate time, which I hope is soon. I'm going to say the same thing again, um, but I appreciate the uh, tenacity of asking the question again. Um, I would not have needlessly wasted your time. It was important that the community understand that we are actively involved in this investigation. We are working around the clock. We have been for the last 72 hours and will continue to do so to see that justice is done. Again, we're going to do it right, but we will act with dispatch and I will keep all of you informed as soon as there's another development. And I will make sure that you, I promise, do not have to wait again. We'll have it timed right. Okay, thanks everybody. Appreciate you coming. Thank you. Good to see you, Bernie.